Hi, my name is Scott Berg. Welcome to the Festival of Books. This panel is called uh, Biography, the American Century. Uh, before we get into it, I just had, had one or two uh, minor uh, housekeeping issues. Uh, immediately after this panel, uh, all the authors will go, and I hope you will all follow to a signing area, signing area number seven. There'll be lots of people directing you there, um, so you can continue any conversations you might want to start over there. Uh, the second thing I think I know, I've been doing these panels since this festival of books began more than 15 years ago, and I have started each one saying the same thing, which becomes truer and truer, which is I can think of no greater gift that a newspaper has bestowed upon its community than this festival of books. And take a moment to... <clears throat> we want our festival of books. Uh, now, uh, just to introduce uh, our panelists, and then we'll hop right in, to my immediate left is Richard Reeves, a syndicated columnist, a senior lecturer right here on this campus at the Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. Um, he is here in some ways uh, under false pretenses, um, <laughs> in that this is, a, I thought, a biography panel, and, and his latest book, which is a, a real thriller, actually, is called uh, Daring Young Men, The Heroism and Triumph of the Berlin Airlift, uh, June 1948 to 1940, May, uh, 1949. Uh, Dick does have some credentials. Um, <laughs> He's, uh, he's written a dozen books, well, actually, I think a baker's dozen books now by my count, uh, three of which have been best-selling presidential biographies, so that certainly fits in with our theme, so we might have him play double duty here. Uh, those books being President Kennedy, President Nixon, and President Reagan, uh, they were about, um, well, President Kennedy. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you can fill in the rep. Uh, <clears throat> to his left is Jim Newton. Uh, who is the uh, author of a wonderful biography of Earl Warren called Justice for All, Earl Warren and the Nation He Made, which was published in 2006. Uh, he, uh, Jim is one of these uh, biographers who makes me absolutely crazy because he writes these big, wonderful biographies, but he has a day job, um, and, a, and a rather big day job, which is he is an editor-at-large at the Los Angeles Times. We locals uh, read him weekly in a column he writes. He has served as a reporter and a bureau chief here. He began his journalism career at the New York Times and the Atlanta Constitution, and he has most recently uh, published this also really splendid biography on Dwight Eisenhower called Eisenhower, the White House Years. Now to uh, Jim's left, uh, we have John Farrell, who goes by Jack. Um, Jack Farrell began his career in journalism uh, writing for such newspapers as the Denver Post and the Boston Globe uh, for more than, well, the last three decades. Washington has been his beat, and he has covered all three branches of the federal government, uh, which has included, actually, his covering every presidential election uh, since 1980. Uh, he is a senior writer for the Center for Public Integrity, which is a nonprofit, nonpartisan investigative uh, news organization. In 2001, he published this too, it was a real page turner, uh, Tip O'Neill and the Democratic Century. And he has, his writing has received just a slew of prizes, uh, including last night, as you may know, uh, when, when uh, Jack received the Los Angeles Times Book Prize for Biography uh, for Clarence Darrow, <laughs> attorney for the day. Yes, uh, so now, if, uh, here are our panelists, off we go. Uh, before we get into the theme, and who knows if we're gonna stick to this theme or not. You know, I've been, I've been looking for threads. I don't know, I'm having a devil of a time. <laughs> but uh, I thought if each of you might begin, and we'll start with you, Dick, uh, perhaps talking about um, how and why you got into writing about the Berlin airlift, especially considering the books that have preceded it. Uh, well, there were two reasons. One was that Jim, wrote about Eisenhower, which is what <laughs> I originally planned, and I, learned that, <laughs> and I learned that he and Evan Thomas, the former editor of Newsweek, were both doing Eisenhower books, and my agent said, you must be out of your mind. And <laughs> the, but the real reason that I wrote that book uh, was Abu Ghraib, uh, that I was so disturbed about the way uh, America was 
uh, what, we, what America was doing around the world, the way it was behaving around the world, and that was not the America I grew up in or believed in and, and do believe in. Uh, and I looked for a subject that I thought showed America as I saw it. And that subject was fascinating uh, when the amazing thing was that all these young men, uh, particularly Air Force pilots and navigators and uh, weathermen, uh, mechanics, had been away from home for three or four years. They came back, they had just started school, they had just got married, they had just bought a home, they just got a wife and whatnot. And in the uh, middle of the night, uh, in 1940, uh, uh, have lost t track of time. Uh, they got phone calls and many telegrams because there wasn't phones in every home in the country at that time saying uh, report to Fort Dix by four o'clock in an afternoon three days ahead. And they were put back on duty, slept in barns in the mud and whatnot and did what everyone knew was impossible, which was to feed one of the largest cities in the world by air. And the planes they began with, for those of you who follow these things, were little DC-3s. And then they moved up to uh, DC-4s. And it's just a very, very exciting book about how I like to see America as itself. And just very briefly, for those of us who weren't born until the 1980s, <laughs> um, um, why, why was there a, an airlift? What was, what was the Berlin airlift about? The, what, the Berlin airlift what the was about incomplete uh, treaties after World War II. And Berlin, Germany was divided into four zones, American, German, uh, French, and, uh, British. and British. And then the city of Berlin itself, because of its symbolic importance, was, uh, was divided into four zones, French, American, English, and Russian. Uh, but, uh, but Berlin was 110 miles inside of East Germany so that they controlled all the land routes uh, in, uh, between uh, the, the Western world and Berlin, and they closed them. They closed the trail, uh, train lines, the canals, uh, the highways and uh, America, they had uh, uh, five million troops surrounding Berlin in East Germany uh, and we had 1,500. And at a cabinet meeting, uh, Harry Truman polled his uh, cabinet, the chiefs of staff, about whether it could be done and they all said uh, no, it was impossible to carry that much food in the air, particularly since we had demobilized almost totally immediately at the end of World War II. And Truman stood up and said, I want to thank you very much. And then he stood in the doorway and turned around and he said, do it. <laughs> and we did. Pretty great. Uh, Jim, uh, I know the genesis of your Eisenhower book is, is because you had spent so much time doing the Earl Warren. But so one day you're sitting in the office saying, gee, I'm just not busy enough here at the newspaper. <laughs> um, I've written a book on Earl Warren. I think I'll take on a biography of Eisenhower. <laughs> Uh, what happened one day? <laughs> um, well, first of all, let me just say how delighted uh, I am that, Richard, that you decided to write on the Berlin Airlift. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, yeah, actually, the, the, the thing that happened in my day is I got a call from an editor in New York, an editor, in fact, that uh, both Scott and I work with, uh, and she uh, had read the Warren book. She was convinced that there was an important Eisenhower presidency book to do. There's been a lot written, of course, about Eisenhower. Um, and I in <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure she had the right number? Yeah, right, exactly. I'm delighted that she got the wrong number. Um, but uh, uh, so I, because uh, Phyllis, uh, Phyllis is uh, my editor's name, uh, because Phyllis uh, had observed that there was a, a great sort of histori histori historiography uh, on the Eisenhower war period, that she felt the, the important niche left to write was the presidency. And since I had covered some of the presidency uh, in the course of doing the Warren book, I felt like I had a nice head start on it. Um, the thing, though, that I guess I should mention in all of this, when I started this book, because I had seen Eisenhower mainly through the eyes of Warren, um, 
I actually thought I would write a very different book than I ended up writing. Um, Warren and Eisenhower, uh, after initially being quite fond of each other, and of course Eisenhower appointed Warren uh, to the court, uh, grew apart uh, during and after the presidency and really were not uh, fond of each other in retirement. And so I imagined writing a fairly critical uh, book about Eisenhower. Um, and I wrote a very, uh, uh, a very positive one, uh, sort of to my surprise. Um,